Welcome to the Answers for Elders radio show. Meet the trusted experts who will give you straight answers and will help guide you on the path of later life care. Now, here's your host, founder, caregiver, and CEO, Suzanne Newman. And welcome everyone to Answers for Elders radio network. And we are talking about holistic approaches to health today. And one of the things I think that a lot of us feel like you know, we don't, we forget that there's a lot of ways that we can do things holistically and healthfully. And we're so excited to have our health and wellness expert in so many areas for seniors and caregivers, Dr. Sean Weiss with us. And Sean, welcome back to Answers for Elders. It's so great to have you. Thanks for having me. I love being here all the time. Well, I love having you anytime. So (laughs) Sean, I love this topic. How many of us forget that there's a lot of things we can do in our lifestyle that is outside of the allopathic world (laughs) and really thinking about our world in a different way, I guess is the point that I'm making. So before we get to the topic, what is holistic care? Well, holistic care, I mean, by definition is really the ability to take care of, you know, your physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, and social health. Right. Mm-hmm. And really just understanding that the connectivity between all of it, you know, we have right. a very compartmentalized medical system, right? You know, yeah. you have specialists for absolutely everything. And, and now I'm a firm believer. And like I said, I've been in that world, you know, and I'm still in that world for the last 26 years, but you know, there's a lot more that you can do. And when you are in mm-hmm. that, um, you know, I call it a sick care system, honestly, because I think that there's a lot of profitability and and, and sick mm-hmm. and, and people being sick. Mm-hmm. And you know, if you don't take care of your health now, you're going to be forced to take care of your illness later. So mm-hmm. being able to have an open mind to understand that there are other ways to just understand how your body works and understand the connection between your, your physical and your mental health, mm-hmm. right? And your socialization and your spiritual wellness. I mean, there's just all kinds of wonderful studies mm-hmm that show if you dig a little bit deeper, you can get into root cause health and just you know, kind of get to the bottom of why right. things are happening. Instead of just, you know, we are just as a society, so into kind of a, a pill for an ill, right? Mm-hmm. Like we can take a pill and mask it, take a pill and mask it. Are we, what's causing it? Is there a way we can remedy some of these illnesses and symptoms in a different way? Yeah. And you know, when you, you think about that, For example, how often we're working out in the yard and we get a backache and we go to a doctor and we take a pill. And there's so many other things that we could do for ourselves without, but we, a lot of times we don't know, because one of the things you said that was so just simple, but it's the truth. How many of us understand how our bodies work? I I would say very few. And and Mm -hmm. it's kind of sad because when you think about that's the, that's the piece that you have to work with the rest of your life and why they don't teach these things in school. I don't understand, (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know? So you, when you sit there and you look at this of, you know, understand how your body works, that's huge in itself. Right. I mean, as a therapist, I mean, I think most physical therapists, occupational therapists, we're pretty much by nature, holistic practitioners. Mm -hmm. we We look at the whole body, like, I don't just treat a shoulder or a knee problem, right? You know, my assessments really are holistic and mm-hmm. I'm looking at all the contribute, you know, contributing factors. Mm-hmm. And that's what you have to do. Even if you're over 50, you, you need right. to start looking at those things. Never too late sure. to start, especially if you're trying everything or you go to the doctor and you're like, I still feel mm-hmm. like crap, you know? there are other things that you yeah. can look at. You need to dig a little bit deeper. You know, if the, yeah. if the pill's not working and, and you're still not feeling mm-hmm. your best and not functioning at your best, then it's time to to look a little sure. bit deeper. Sure. And I think what some things that we overlook, a great example is if you need strength training, you feel like you're having a hard time getting up and down a chair or doing something, you can call your medical doctor if you're over 65 and Medicare pays for it for physical Mm -hmm. therapy. You Mm -hmm. can do, you know, every time you go in for your health checkup every year, there's certain questions that, you you know, they have you answer. They ask you if, you know, so there's a lot of things that are checkpoints, but there's a lot of opportunities and things that you can do that you don't even think about or didn't, don't know that these things are available. 
Right. It's true. Like, you know, I always say, you know, muscle is the organ of longevity. Mm-hmm. Um, it definitely is. And preserving muscle function, especially in older adults is, is critical. Mm-hmm. So if you are going to the doctor because you now are not functioning like you were, I can't get out of the chair or mm-hmm. I, it's hard to go up and down the steps mm-hmm. or um, I'm fatigued all the time. Okay. What, what, what are you doing about that? Right. There's things that you can do sure. on your own. You just sure. need somebody to guide you. Exactly. Um, yeah. Don't overlook that. So yeah, over when you're over 50, you know, and I treat a lot of people over 60, but if you're over 50, I mean, now's the time. I mean, now's the time to kind of take inventory of where's your health right? and are you functioning at an optimal level? And when I assess people, I'm looking at, you know, six pillars of health in a very holistic manner. I'm looking at sleep, sleep and stress are just um, two of the things I see the most mm-hmm. problems with as of late, but sleep wow. and stress, I'm looking at nutrition, looking at gut health, exercise, and emotional mental health. So mm-hmm. those six pillars are all connected. Yeah. So if you are, you know, listening and you're like, Hey, I, yeah, I, I know I'm not feeling good. I've gotten older. I have arthritis. Um, do you have a chronic disease? Mm-hmm. Um, do you exercise? Um, what's your nutrition like? Mm -hmm. And if you're answering all those like, eh, you know, really, yeah, I can't do it anymore because I have early bad arthritis or, um, I don't want to, I, I, I'm going to eat what I want because, Mm -hmm. you know, nobody's going to tell me what to eat. Okay. Right. But how are you functioning? You know, when you, when you get tired of being tired, right. And you're sick and tired of being sick and tired it's never too late to do something about that. Yeah. And I, I just am a firm believer in a holistic approach to that. Like if I, if you're coming to me wanting to start an exercise program, there is something for everybody. Absolutely. Even in a bed, even in a chair, there is something for everybody. So depending on what level I can mm-hmm. get you a program that you can do on your own. But yeah. amongst that assessment, I'm also going to look mm-hmm. at anything else. Like, are you on medications? Do you have a chronic disease? Mm-hmm. Tell me, you know, I'm going to make you show me what you eat on it during the day on a two or three day period. I want to see honestly and openly what yeah. you're eating. That's yeah. going to contribute to, you know, is it contributing to inflammation in your body? Mm-hmm. Some people that have just changed their diet who now suddenly it doesn't hurt mm-hmm. to get out of the chair. Yeah. Um, my joints aren't hurting as bad simply from dietary changes and, and increasing activity. Yeah. I'm experiencing that is what, what I just told you, because I've changed my diet in dramatically. Not that I ever ate anything bad. Now that I'm much more regimented about what I'm eating, I still don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. I really don't. I don't have the desire. There's a couple of things that I miss kind of the other night, my husband had pasta and I was looking at the, across the table going, Oh my gosh, (laughs) that was, that was a kicker. But you know, at the end of the day, when I walked out of there, I thought, you know what? I, I was proud of myself. That's the thing. I think that realizing that choosing health choosing a better lifestyle and making choices. It's, you know, like how many times do, you know, something happens where you fall, like I had a bad fall and I hurt my knee and it swelled up the size of a basketball. I chose to do something holistic with that. I made the choice and I'm telling you, it was amazing that that happened and it worked very well for me. Well, it's a matter of, you know, are you, are you addressing mm-hmm. all of those components? Like we said, physical, mm-hmm. emotional, spiritual, social mm-hmm. components. Mm-hmm. Or maybe you're like, you know, I have a handle on the nutrition. I'm doing really good with that, yeah. you know, or I got the exercise. I, I walk every single day. Well, you can't out walk a bad diet. I'm just going to tell no. you that right now. <laughs> you can't. No, you can't. So, so, but are you touching the uh, more of the emotional self-care mm-hmm. piece? And I think in this society, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of worry um, in, in the society right now mm-hmm. and it's causing people to lose sleep. It's there's financial mm-hmm. stresses. There's all kinds of things that are contributing. Are you taking care of you? So mm-hmm. from a self-care standpoint, do you have a good routine? Um, do you, do you have structure in your day? Do you mm-hmm. plan out your day the night before? That's yeah. huge. Something like, well, I don't know if you do that, but I do that every night, the night before yeah. I know exactly. I review my day. Mm-hmm. I know what I have. I know where I have gaps of time. And then in those gaps of time, what am I going to do 
you know, for me, am I going to take a walk? Yeah. Am I going to, you know, do my workout? I mean, those, yeah. those are really helpful things. Yeah. Um, so what would you say the most popular practices that you can do at home? If you're at home and you're doing some things to make your life more holistic. The first thing I would do is try to start incorporating some emotional health pieces, which in this society with the amount of stress that people have, we're finding that that is lacking and that can be done in journaling, journaling, practicing gratitude, right? Mm -hmm. Practicing positivity. It seems very little, but you'd be surprised Mm -hmm. just one making one general entry a day on what you're grateful for will break any type of negativity Mm -hmm. cycle you Mm -hmm. have going on in your head. You know, I'm so lucky because I had an aunt who, (laughs) I don't know how she did this, but she instilled in me to go through life looking for the diamonds. And she would explain to me that life is nothing but an unpolished diamond and it's, and your character can be polished and shine greater by overcoming or doing things or giving back. But it was always tied to building myself. And I don't, you know, I had so many millions of of things, but, you know, I always looking for the diamonds in life or opportunities for me to grow, opportunities for me to learn. And I, to this day, I think about all the things that she said to me, like I, we'd go into a, a, a grocery store parking lot and there was an a cart, you know, laying there and she'd say, there's an opportunity. And so I would learn to take the cart back for that. Somebody else left back. And I still do that to this day. And there's something inside of me, Sean, that says, this is good for me. This is a great thing for me to do. I feel like Mm -hmm. I'm contributing to the world and I'm serving the world, which makes me feel good about myself. I I think Mm -hmm. a lot of what you're talking about is that piece. It's just for me, it was done in a different way, you know, from a ch- being a child. Just realizing that, yeah, and there's, there's other things that are contributing to how you mm-hmm. feel, right? right? Yeah. Not just going to the doctor and taking your medication. Right. There are other things that contribute to your optimal health. And, you know, if you're over 50, you know, and, you know, I'm 54 and, you know, I have to baby. look and say, oh my, am I reinventing myself? Like, you yeah. know, what? What do I want? What What's this next phase yeah. going to look like? Right. Yeah. And what are your goals? And mm-hmm. I know people, older adults sometimes have a lot of difficulty. They don't think that that's possible or they don't think mm-hmm. that, um, or they might have regrets, Well, you know what, you know, darn it. Like there, there's, it's never too late to make some positive changes in your health mm-hmm. because, you know, this is the time in your life where you should be enjoying it the most, right? Yeah, exactly. Smelling the roses, smelling the roses. Doing yeah. Some traveling. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, doing all kinds of great things. And so if you feel like you're stuck in, in this, you know, in terms of, especially if you have a chronic disease and you're like, okay, well, I have a physician and I manage that and I take my medication, but I still don't feel good or I still can't walk every day or there are things that you can do. Take action. You are the CEO of your life. Yes. Right? That is so, so true. Um, and it's your choice on how you, how you view the world. And it's like, mm-hmm. if the life, it's the glass is half empty or half full. And it's interesting. There's a dynamic with my husband and, you know, he's a glass half empty person and it drives me crazy sometimes <laughs> because I don't see things the same way he does. I see potential and possibilities, but again, we have different personalities, right? right? His, his area is safety and being in a box and routine and all these things. And why he married me sometimes, I wonder. <laughs> but I think attract, that, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I think what you're saying is, is find those, you know, those lanes in your world that you can mm-hmm. be more of yourself, more of the world to you. And everyone, I'm sure, has a different way of experiencing that. Yeah, there's ways to get your joy back. And, yeah. you know, I, like I said, I always start with analyzing your own life in those six pillars. Yeah. You know, the sleep, the stress, the nutrition, the gut health, the exercise and the emotional health. And we have a whole series on your six pillars in your podcast library. So we can certainly direct people to that. Sean, this is so great. Thank you so much for this information. And I'm uh, you're also um, providing a um, a feature for a special guest that you had um, also because you want to share it and preview of what also the other two um, podcasts that you're going to be sharing with us. 
Um, yeah, I'm going to be sharing a podcast I did with my wonderful friend, Erin, who I've been, actually known her as a colleague for over 30 years. And she, we're going to be talking about the endocannabinoid system and the world of CBD and wellness and how mm-hmm. that is. Oh my gosh, there's been some amazing, amazing work done in that field. But just understanding that everybody has an endocannabinoid system. Yes. And what is it? Like, yes. I wasn't even really aware mm-hmm. of it. And, mm-hmm. and, and I've become very enlightened and um, it was such a great interview and it's so educational. So I'm going to be putting that on there as well. Well, and, we're so excited yeah. to have it because I think one of the things that it's kind of a misnomer, people don't know that much about the potential yeah. and there's a stigma and yeah. there's definitely a stigma. Yeah. And, um, and Erin will be the first to say that she had, she was one of those people um, and, wow. and now she, yeah, so she's, she's an amazing yeah. person. She's also a doctor of physical therapy and, uh, just one of the sweetest humans on the planet today is her oh. birthday actually. So well, yeah. That'll <laughs> be so awesome. And yeah. Sean, thank you so much for being on the show. And for those of you that are interested, her podcasts are here on our platform and answers for elders as well. Thanks again, Sean. Thank you for having me, Sudan. We at answers for elders. Thank you for listening. Did you know that you can discover hundreds of podcasts in our library on senior care? So visit our website and discover our decision guides that will help you also navigate decision making. Find us at AnswersForElders.com.